Here's another interesting rule of inference. This rule is known as conditional proof, or CP for short. I want to begin by explaining the logic behind the rule. Suppose I'm doing a proof. It's got premises P1, P2, and P3. And then let's suppose it has a conclusion and let the conclusion be represented by A horseshoe C, where A and C are formulas. Uh, and so we have an argument P1, P2, P3. These are representing the premises of the argument and A horseshoe C represents the conclusion. So obviously the conclusion is in the form of a conditional. Think of these as variables actually for statements in our, in our language. Now suppose that I'm going down the hill and I'm just not able to derive the conclusion. I can't get it. So I give up. And then I find another argument that looks similar to this. Actually, this other argument has the same premises as this argument, but it has one extra premise. It has the, the formula that's the antecedent of this conditional is actually a premise of this argument. And uh, the conclusion of this argument is actually the consequent of this conditional. Remember a conditional? is the statement of the form if p then q, p horseshoe q, and the sentence or formula to the left of the horseshoe is the antecedent, and the formula to the right of the horseshoe is the consequent. Let's suppose that the consequent of this conditional is actually the conclusion of this argument. So now these arguments are exactly the same except that the antecedent of this conditional is, an, is actually another premise in this argument and the con consequent of this conditional happens to be the conclusion of this argument. And suppose I try proving this and I'm actually able to derive the conclusion C right there. So I've derived the, con the conclusion C from the premises proving this to be a valid argument. Let me now give you the reasoning for the following claim. If this is a valid argument, this must be a valid argument too. Here's why. If this is a valid argument, then it's impossible. It's impossible that this would be true, this would be true, this would be true, this would be true, and this would be false. A valid argument is, of course, an argument in which it's impossible that the premises are all true and the conclusion is false. But if that's an impossible assignment of truth values, then so must this be an impossible assignment of truth values. Because these are the very same formulas as these, but in a different arrangement. If, if it's impossible for those to be true and that to be false, then it's impossible for that to be true, that to be true, that to be true, this one to be true, and this one to be false. It's impossible that that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true, and that's false. If it's impossible, that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true, and that's false. But this is the only way that a, con a conditional is false, is if the antecedent's true and the consequence false. Therefore, it's impossible for those premises to be true and this conditional conclusion to be false. And therefore, if this is valid, this has to be valid too. Now, this logic gives us the rule of conditional proof. The rule of conditional proof says that if I have an argument, let's say that I have an argument with two premises, and the conclusion is of the form of a conditional, let's say the conclusion is some A horseshoe C type formula, the rule says I may indent, draw a line, I may assume the antecedent of the conditional that I'm seeking to prove, and when I make that assumption, I write AP, and that means assume premise. So I assume the antecedent of the conditional I'm seeking to prove. If I'm then able to derive the, con the consequent of that conditional, this shows that the entire conditional follows from the premises alone. 
because remember if I've got premises and a conclusion that's a conditional if I add the antecedent to the premises and using just the antecedent and the premises I'm able to reach just the consequent that proves that the conditional as a whole follows from the premises alone per this reasoning and so the rule of conditional proof then says that if I assume the antecedent of the conditional that I'm trying to prove, if I assume just the antecedent, if I reach just the consequent, then I'm allowed to disindent and assert the conditional I was seeking to prove, that's this conditional, and it'll always uh, start with the assumption as the antecedent, and the consequent that I reached will be here, and it'll come over here. And I write for my justification CP, and I cite the indented lines. So in the next video, I'll do an actual conditional proof. In fact, I'll keep it rolling, and I'll bring it over here. So, so let's do a conditional proof. So let's do a conditional proof. I have two premises and a conclusion in this proof. I want to prove this is a valid argument, so I want to prove that if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. The conclusion is of the form P horseshoe Q, and that suggests that I'll use the conditional proof procedure. So my first step is to indent and then draw a line that marks what's called a subproof off from what would be directly under the premises. Now I'm going to make an assumption. This time I'm going to assume the antecedent of the conditional I'm trying to prove. The antecedent is the formula to the left of the horseshoe. I'm going to assume just the A. For justification I write AP stands for assume premise. So I assume the antecedent, and now below here in this indented subproof, my goal is to reach just the consequent, the C formula. And be, beware, you don't want to reach in the indentation the entire conditional. You only want to reach the consequent of that conditional, the formula after the horseshoe. So I'm looking at my premises, I'm looking at what I've assumed, and I see some moves I can make. The uh, A and the A horseshoe B allow me to apply modus ponens and infer B. So I've inferred B by modus ponens on lines 2 and 3. Do you see the modus ponens pattern there? P horseshoe Q, P infer Q. So that's line 4. Now, I'm looking at that C. Of course, I want to derive C, and there's the C I'm looking for. So I, if I could get A and B, that would allow me to derive C and I would win. So can I, inf can I get an A and B? And of course I have A and B here, and my mind immediately remembers the conjunction rule. So I'm going to conjoin A and B by conjunction lines 3 and 4. So I've put lines 3 and 4 together with an ampersand in the middle. That's conjunction. Can, you can take any two lines and join them together with an and between them. That's conjunction. Remember, conjunction only works with an ampersand. Now, that matches the antecedent of this premise and, of course, reminds me of modus ponens. Modus ponens says if I have P and P horseshoe Q, I may infer the Q. So I'll bring the C down following modus ponens lines 1 and 5. P, P horseshoe Q, infer the Q. Well now, I started with the antecedent. I reached the consequent alone. And so I have done what I needed to do with the indent part. I now am allowed to disindent and assert the entire 
conditional I was seeking to prove formed with my assumed premise A, horseshoe, the C that I reached here, and uh, that's following the conditional proof rule, and I cite the lines that are indented, it's 3 through 6. And I've now proven that A horseshoe C follows from the premises alone, and therefore that this is a valid argument. Um, remember that the lines in the indented subproof do not follow from the premises. This can be thought of as a, an experiment, if you wish, a logical experiment. None of these actually follow from the premise. We were just experimenting and discovering that if we add A, the antecedent, to the premises, using that we can derive the consequent C. And that shows that the whole conditional follows from the premises alone, which is why we are allowed to disindent and assert the whole conditional, citing CP lines 3 through 6. So that's a short and easy, but I think illustrative conditional proof. So good luck with them. The more you practice, the better you get. Thank you.